right here. Let's give me a second there. Lines are busy up there. Okay, I'm all right. I figured out a way to put it so that I'll be able to keep it safe. Oh man. All righty, where are we? Uh, We're going across that footbridge. Okay. This is about where the bridge was that the British fought their way across. And the Americans had all their cannons trained on the bridge. And they slaughtered a bunch of people. Um, coming across this bridge, a bunch of British, uh, British uh, soldiers. So this is a wooden. This was a wooden bridge going across the Anacostia River. Right. And it was called the Anacostia River then. It was called the Eastern Branch of the Potomac. Um, there was no. It wasn't called the Anacostia. At the time. And if you look to the right, if you want to stop here a second. Sure. If you look to the right, all the cannon were, uh, all the American cannon were focused, you know, with grape shot and whatnot, right on this bridge. And so there was great uh, bloodshed right here. And the Americans stopped them um, at first, but uh, some of the British officers led their men across a ford in the river, which is about where that bridge is. And they walked across the river there and came up around the side of the Americans and attacked from there. And that was what caused the initial collapse. Um, that and a whole lot of disorganization on the American side. And this was when? This was, I believe, uh, uh, August 24th, uh, 1814. And that was the... Uh... This was the attack. This was the American forces had finally located the British and were going to confront them and stop them uh, on their march, on their determined march towards Washington. So the British were, 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 uh, were here? Right, they were coming across the bridge from behind us. From oh, I see. There. Okay, the British were marching from... Right, uh, from Bladensburg, from the, the, the port area, uh, across this bridge. Um, I guess... Uh, and the Americans were, so the British were, so now I'm going to try to get a sense here. Um, oh, here comes, uh, oh boy. Excuse us. Um, the British landed where? Uh, the British landed actually eight or ten miles from here, I think, uh, off of the Potomac at a place called Pig Point. I can pull that out. I'm actually not an expert on that part. The British landed from England. Uh, well, they no, they, they had already been they had already been stateside. Right, they weren't they, even they, they, they were they were living. All of the troops were aboard ships in the Chesapeake Bay, uh, off of uh, Point Lookout and off of the uh, Patuxent and the Potomac. Um, kind of in there, they had something like uh, forty ships, uh, some of them great battleships and troop, 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 troop transports. That's where they were coming from. They had sailed. Uh, I guess uh, from England and possibly and from France, uh, mostly from France. Now that I think of it, they just, uh, because they were Wellington's men. These were bat battle-hardened, hardened people from the Revolutionary War. From uh, the uh, this is uh, the Napoleonic Wars. Napoleonic. They had just beaten uh, Napoleon uh, before his uh, the Battle of Waterloo. They had, they had beaten him and they had sent him to the one island from which he escaped, and then he came back again a little bit later. Um, Elba? I, I, no, 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 I, I, he was at St. Helena. Okay, well, I, I, anyway, right back here though, I'm sorry. I, the, 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 wow, this is really neat. Um, I guess we should go, should, we could talk more over on the other. Yes. But the, but the bridge here, this is, uh, the, it was a wooden bridge. Did the wooden bridge survive? No. So the wooden bridge no. was long gone. Yeah. The Treaty of the Revolutionary War was signed in 1783. Uh, the French Revolution led to the rise of Napoleon. 
which was 1793. And somewhere in there, the British took him on and fought. They fought until 1802. There was a one-year layoff. And in 1803, hostilities flared up again. And this is now 1814. They had finally beaten him and sent him off to St. Helena. Um, and so a couple of thousand um, battle, uh, Wellington's uh, battle-hardened regulars got sent over to punish Jonathan and finish off the American War, which to the British was a sidelight to the Napoleonic Wars. Um, they, they came across the Atlantic. I think they might have gone to the uh, islands, uh, um, the West Indies first, and then came up uh, to uh, the Chesapeake Bay. And uh, they chased, there was a flotilla led by Joshua Barney, um, uh, a great uh, naval hero who had uh, 30 barges with which he attacked the British and harassed them, trying to hold them at bay. They chased him up, um, I guess, up the Potomac uh, as far as they could go. Um, and then they landed. Um, and came up to up, Upper Marlboro, and then came to Bladensburg and pointed themselves directly towards Washington, where the 4,500 British or so were met by maybe 5,000, 4,000 to 5,000 American troops, mostly militia, um, troops, uh, some from Virginia, many from Baltimore and, and, and Washington. Francis Scott Key was among them. That's, that's where the, there were three actions that day on this battlefield. That's where the first one was, where we just came from, where the Americans were shooting at them as they were trying to cross the bridge. They forded the bridge and came at the Americans from the side. Uh, and then there was a second action, I guess right up the street there, uh, where uh, the Americans unfortunately quickly collapsed. And then there was a third action where the guy, Joshua Barney, that I was just talking about, led his men once their barges were uh, trapped by the British. They grabbed their cannon and dragged them across the, across the land and dragged them up, uh, I guess about half a mile up that way towards a place called Tunnicliffe's Bridge, where uh, once again there was a bridge and a, and a, a steep drop off where the British came across the bridge and uh, Barney's men not only shot at them, and these were these were not militia guys that you know were clerks and farmhands. These were um, these were, were battle-hardened guys who had been ha harassing the British for uh, for a month or two. Uh, and they could shoot. And so uh, they did hold the British up, and uh, when they ran out of ammunition, they actually had a couple of um, bayonet charges. And uh, it was particularly uh, brutal. And it wasn't until Barney was wounded uh, very seriously and lost a lot of blood that, uh, and everybody, all the militia, uh, the DC and Virginia militia under orders had been told to um, retreat. Uh, all of the militia and everybody at their sides retreated and it was just the, uh, the flotilla men with Barney and a uh, contingent of Marines. Uh, Barney ordered them to retreat as well, which they refused to do at first. Uh, and then he ordered them again just before he, he was, uh, was bled, bled white at that point. Uh, finally a couple of guys volunteered to stand there with him and everybody else took off. This is after they were out of ammunition. Uh, had done everything they could to hold up the British. How long was this going on for? You think? This was probably the entire action that I'm talking about. It's probably uh, three to four hours, I think. Um, and it was at that point that uh, uh, Barney was paroled on the spot, and uh, the British sent some graciously sent some uh, some guys to carry him to to somewhere to a hospital 
uh, or to a place to recuperate. It might have been that stone building right over there that we were talking about. I'm not, I'm not certain. Uh, and then the pr British, I don't know if they camped or proceeded straight on to Washington. I, I can't tell you. It's in this book I'm carrying on my back. <laughs> wow. All right. So where are we going now? 